Okay, so welcome to the webinar. Today's webinar is, uh, you can see by the title there, Currency Futures Expl uh, Simplified. My objective today is to explain or to simplify it for you. Um, you know, currency futures are slowly growing in popularity as they offer traders exposure to the foreign currency against the South African Rand. Um, in this webinar, as I said, we're going to be explaining how to use currency futures, number one, but also more importantly, I think just to simplify it in the sense of what are currency futures. Uh, I'm going to discuss a lot of the terminology around that. We would trade currency futures. And also, um, I think it's also important just to discuss an example. Um, I'm going to show you like a cash flow table um, and also all the things around, around that. So my objective today, as I say, is, is KISS. Keep it uh, simple and short. Um, as I say, I've left many, a uh, lot of time for questions. So let's kick off with a quote from Kevin O'Leary. I always like to start with a, a quote from, from someone. So um, Kevin O'Leary, by the way, um, here we go. Kevin O'Leary is a Canadian businessman, author, and television personality. He has a quote from him. He says, money is my military. Each dollar is a soldier. I never send my money into battle unprepared and undefended. I send it to conquer and to take currency prisoner and bring it back to me. So I think it's quite an appropriate little, uh, quote. We've got to talk about currency futures today. But looking at that, my interpretation of that quote is um, – you want to get your money to work hard for you. That's number one. Number two, also you want to provide protection um, against your, your financial situation. So it all boils down to um, knowledge and experience, and hence this, this webinar. So if you had a look at the uh, current economic uh, situation yeah, in South Africa, obviously the political climate uh, is creating a lot of uncertainty. We've been talking about it for quite a while, and obviously that uncertainty creates volatility. So the ideal situation, it doesn't matter what's happening in the market. As a speculator, you can take advantage. In other words, uh, take advantage by betting on direction, or, or on, on the currency, that's number one. But also you can use it as a, as a, as a hedging tool uh, and, or um, the way to look at it as an insurance policy against ex uh, adverse exchange rate movements. Okay, so let's kick off, by, as I said just now, by looking at the terminology. So first things first, um, you must understand we're talking about currency futures as a derivative, so it derives its, its, its value on an underlying instrument, and in, in, this, in this situation, obviously, uh, currency. But uh, currency futures were introduced way back in 2007 by the JSC, so they've been around for over 10 years now. And to start off with, uh, the first thing I want to highlight for you, uh, it's, it's a contract. Currency futures is a standardized contract that allows market participants the right to buy or sell an underlying currency at a fixed exchange rate at a specified date in the future. So, in other words, it allows local traders exposure to a foreign currency movement relative to the RAND. So, we talk about currency traders buying and selling currency pairs, for example, the RAND relative to the US dollar. And how do you make money? You make money when the currency exchange rate moves up and down. So that's the first thing I want you to understand. It's a, it's a standardized contract. We talked about the contract size just now. Um, so it's a standardized contract, uh, on, and obviously it being a derivative on, on an underlying currency, and we talk about trading currency pairs. Okay. So important to understand also this is a geared product. When I say geared, we talk about leverage, and leverage is a, is a I say it's a double-edged sword. Leverage positions can lead to large gains if the exchange rate between two currencies move as anticipated. In other words, in your favor. That's one scenario. But also, conversely, um, will cause large, large losses if the exchange rate obviously moves in the opposite direction. Okay. So that's the first thing you need to highlight. So there is risk involved. It's not for everybody. But be aware that it being a get product and leverage, um, obviously, that the, there's, there's risk involved. So talking about um, gearing, how do we get gearing? We use what they call initial margins. You put down an initial deposit to open a futures position. So this is a fixed rand amount per contract. So for about 10% of the value of the contract. So this gives you gearing. If I'm putting down 10% to get 100% exposure, my gearing as such is 10 times. So one rand movement um, um, in, the, in the underlying um, currency can result in a 10 times movement on the currency future. So just a very simplified terms way of looking at that. So if we're talking about initial margin, we also, if you're putting down 10% uh, 
and you're having 100% exposure, there's obviously also a finance cost involved because you're borrowing the other 90% or there's interest involved um, uh, uh, in the in the uh, transaction. Okay, so it's all priced into the futures contract already. Just bear in mind that there's a finance cost. Mark to market, also a very important term to understand. This is a, a um, daily revaluation of each open position by the exchange, by the JSC, at the close of each business day. So it's a it's a safety mechanism to protect you as a client and as well as a PSG against adver adverse uh, price movements. And you'll see an example just now when we talk about um, uh, uh, the cash flow table. Okay. So linked to that, we saw I've got an initial margin and I've also got a variation margin. A variation margin I call it a top-up. Remember that 10% that margin, that deposit gets ring-fenced. So for example, you had to take uh, the uh, US dollar example and the current exchange rate. Uh, it's say, so, so a few days ago, it was about 13 rand to the, um, to the dollar. And the margin, you, in the next slide, we'll talk about it anyway. But the, the contract size is a 1,000 of the underlying. So 13 times a 1,000, your exposure or the value of the contract is, is 13,000 Rand. So your initial margin for the used dollar contract at this point in time is 1,350 Rand per contract. So that gives you a, a, a gearing of 9.6 times. But that margin gets ring fenced it has to be kept at, at 10, roughly the 10 percent on a daily basis on a mark to market basis if the market goes against you um you need to top up so we lay up to a thousand rand we, we call it we talk about a margin call in your state for the next day uh up to a thousand rand uh we lay up to a thousand rand over a thousand rand you need to top up by three o'clock in the afternoon failing which a PSG, the, the traders will try to obviously try and get a hold of you, but uh, if they can't get a hold of you, they'll start closing off or, cl or close out some of your contracts to make up that difference. That is what I will talk about that variation margin. Okay, so go one step further. We talk about futures being having an expiry, and this is important to understand that when we talk about expiry, it's the third Monday of the month ending the quarter. So we talk about the quarter being March, June, September, and December. That's the first thing you must understand. They have a life, so you call it 90 days. That's number one. Number two is uh, they're very, very uh, cost-effective. Um, sorry, I mentioned just now about the contract size. It's a 1,000 of the foreign underlying currency. So it might be a $1,000 that you want to trade, or you want to, if you want to trade euros, it would be a 1,000 euros or a 1,000 pounds. Recently, as I say, the exchange rate was about 13 rand to the dollar, so it'd be 13,000 rand. That would be the value of the contract, or uh, around about 14,000 turn rand for the euro contract, and around about 16,700 rand for the pound contract. That's the size of the, or, of the contract. That's your exposure, rather, your, the value of the contract. So, so they're very cost effective to have that exposure. The example I was just talking about now. Sorry, I forgot that it would come up now. Um, so, to have the exposure, your brokerage is only 20 Rand per contract. So, we, we, as I say, cost effective. That's including uh, including VAT per contract, 20 Rand per contract. And you'll see in my example just now talking about 10 contracts. If you want to buy 13 contracts, it's going to cost you 200 Rand to have exposure of over 13,000 Rand. Okay, sorry, over 133,000 Rand. Um, we talk about price movement each, we talk about four decimal points, you'll see in the next slide, but each cent represents 10 rand in profit or loss per contract. So the trade needs to move four cents in order for you to break even. So it takes you 20 rand to open, two cents movement to open up the open up position, that's your cost there, and 2% to close, uh, two cents to close. So that's another uh, two, uh, 20 rand there. So 40 rand to break even, that's what it costs you to, to open up a, a position. Okay. Um, all currency futures are cash settled in, when it expires, and it's always, always, always settled in rands. Okay, so those are the things, some of the things you must understand around a currency future. So who would trade um, currency futures? Okay, but before we get that out, what are the currency pairs available? There's eight available on our website. I suggest that you stick to the four that I've highlighted there in red. Um, these are the most tradable, most liquid uh, currency futures, so we've got the dollar rand, uh, the euro rand, you can see also the behind it to be the, the, the codes, so the ZA US, the euro would be the ZA EU, the British pound would be the 
uh, ZAGB and obviously the Aussie dollar, ZA to AD. Okay, so stick to those. Those are free dealing. They are liquid, um, and you always find that the, the spreads are quite narrow on that. So as I said, who would trade this? Um, and I'm going to look at various examples. You know, imagine just putting yourself in the shoes of a farmer. You want to import some machinery from the states, uh, but you're scared that the, the dollar is going to get uh, the the rand is going to uh, uh, weaken. And uh, why would that be important for you? Because ultimately, you'd be paying more for your combined harvester, whatever the case might be. So imagine, that, as I say, a farmer importing machinery from the USA. He wants to protect. Let me just get my law. Curse out here. He wants to be able to protect against a weekly rand because obviously as I say be paying more so what do you do you buy a ZA US contract and I need to explain this concept to you always trade from the underlying currency point of view so if I'm anticipating the rand to weaken to go from 13 rand to 1350 I want to lock in the price today so I would buy as I said the, the ZA US contract okay so if I anticipate the rent to weaken, I would buy the, the contract. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Okay, so it's always from the foreign currency point of view. Always from the foreign currency point of view. I'm trying to highlight for you and obviously uh, reiterate what the, the, the stance to take. That's if you anticipate um, I'm going from 13 rent to 15, 1350, I'll buy ZA contracts. The opposite, let me look at it this way now. Let me get rid of my cursor now. Let's put yourself in the, foot, in, in the shoes of, of a fund manager. Oops. Uh, in the shoes of a fund manager, yeah, I'm anticipating, um, where, I, where I'm looking at hedging my offshore exposure, I'm anticipating the rent to strengthen. So in this scenario, yeah, I'm anticipating the rent to go from, so say, 1350 to strengthen to 13 rand. So again, I'm anticipating the rent to strengthen. I would sell a ZA US dollar contract. Again, I'm taking from the foreign currency, uh, underlying currency point of view. Okay. When you get this presentation, please look at these two slides, understand the concept there if I'm anticipating a, a stronger, weaker end, but from a foreign currency point of view. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Okay. So um, I've, I've tried to simplify it as, as much as I can or try and explain it as easy as I can. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So remember the whole idea is that in this situation, the fund manager wants to offset these losses against ran hedges, hence taking a contract like that. And for the farmer, obviously, I want to not only pay more, I want to lock in the price today. So how does a currency future work? So currency futures, as I say, they are traded on the on the JC currency derivative trading platform. To simplify it, let's look at, we'll call it a, a, a order book. For the next slide, if I bring it up, this is what an order book would look like. Very similar to those of you that know how the share market would trade, exactly the same thing. On the, on the left-hand side, you've got the bids, and these are, represent all the buyers in the market. Okay, so there we go, put my spotlight. So the bids are all the buyers in the market. On the right-hand side, it'll be the, all, all the offers, and it'll be all the sellers. And like we have in the, in the stock market, we need to match up, agree on price. The volume, by the way, is the number of contracts available. So you can see there's 600 contracts uh, at 13 Rand 37. As I mentioned just now, they are quoted in four up to four decimal points. So you can see the difference between the buyers and the sellers or the bids and the offers in this scenario. Yeah, you subtract that from that, you'll see that there's 39 cents spread. Okay. So... We need to match up. Someone has either drop, either has a raise the price. So if you're looking at this here, by the way, uh, the orders are ra arranged what we call in price and time priority. In other words, first come, first served. The bids and offers, these are the guys that are prepared to pay the most. So it goes from the highest buyer to the lowest, sorry, from the lowest buyer to the highest buyer. And, and on the sell side, the offers go from the lowest to the highest. And as I say, we need to match. On, when you're looking at volume here, you can see there's a big, uh, 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 a lot of contracts at 3,000 or 3,000 contracts at, at 13,37,28. So that can be a big bank usually in the market, okay, at that level. You can see uh, 10 contracts. You have someone hoping to buy uh, 10 contracts at 13,33. For that to execute, an offer has to move down to 13,33. 
Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you guys. So remember, 39 cents times the number of contracts times the underlying contract size, which is a thousand. That would be the difference. Okay, let's move, oh, let me get rid of this. Let's look at a, a example now, and hopefully I can try and simplify this for you guys to understand it through your cash flow table. So someone anticipating we're going to trade that he feels that the rand is going to strengthen, and we've seen that in the last few a few weeks on the market. The rand has strengthened despite, despite our, our downgrade and things like that. So in this scenario, you'd go and sell a ZAR USD contract. Okay, because he anticipates a stronger rand. Okay, so first things first, we understand to open up a position, we need to put an initial margin, and we need to put a, a pay for the brokerage to open up a position. That's to open up a position, and on day four, obviously, when we close the position, we receive our deposit back. This deposit, by the way, is earning interest at the JSC trustees rate. That's number one. And number two, to close out the position, there will also be brokerage. So those are the two bookends, if I took it that way. So now scenario, yeah, an example. Just bear with me. Stay with me so we don't get lost. I'll go open up a position. I, I trade at 1332. Okay, that's a, the futures price. I'm taking out 10 contracts and then for USD, uh, uh, USD um, contract right now, it's 1,350 per contract. So it's up 10. My, my cash flow. My initial margin gets ring fenced, 13,500 rand goes out of my account, gets, gets put into a separate account, uh, held at the JSC uh, as, a, as a good faith deposit. Um, the end of the day, the market closes, market to market, at 1325. Now, you work out the difference between the two of them, yeah. Remember, I'm, I'm anticipating the rand to get stronger. So, the, the rand does close stronger at the end of the day. So, look at the two difference, yeah. It's 7 cents stronger. It's in my favor. Times my 10 contracts, so 7 cents times uh, my 10 contracts, times 1,000 underlying. You see that's a, the movie of 700 rand. Okay. My cash flow, net cash flow, less my 200 rand in brokerage. Remember, it's 10 contracts times 20 rand. It's 200 rand. So, there's my, my net cash flow for the day. I hope you guys are with me. So, 500 rand on that particular day. Next day, my market my, my mark to market was 13.25. You can say it's be my opening price the next day. Yeah, the market closes at 13.15, still in my favor. So, the rand closed stronger. So, that's the difference between the two of them was 10 cents times my 10 contracts times 1,000 underlying. There we go. We, got a, we made a thousand rand on that particular day, remember? Okay, so my cash flow was net a thousand rand. On the third day, my market market was the opening price. There, the market went against us. It weakened eight cents. Okay, the difference between that was eight cents times my 10 contracts times a thousand underlying. 800 rand went out of my account. It'll go out of my, out of my uh, initial margin. So, obviously, I'll have the, uh, a, uh, a margin call. Uh, but it being less than a thousand rand, I don't have to worry about it. Um, but I had net ca a, a negative cash flow for that day. On day four, I decided to close out. Okay, uh, remember that 1323 would be my closing price, that would be my opening price here. That's where I would close. I closed at 1312. So the difference between the two of them was 11 cents. Okay, so 11 cents times my 10 contracts. Okay, times a thousand underlying. My cash flow was 1100 rand. Less my brokerage was 200 rand because now I'm closing out. So t the 10 contracts times the 20 rand, which is equal to 200 rand. So I subtract it off my 1100. So that's how I get that 900. My, remember, there it was taken out of my account, my initial margin. Now it gets returned back to me. Okay. So if you had to add this up, the 500 plus the 1000 plus the 900, less my, 11, my 800, you'll see that you have a cash flow, net cash flow of 1600 rand. So in our example, Okay, I went I went short. Okay, I sold uh, I sold a ZA contract at 13.32 and I bought at 13.12. So that difference was 20 cents times my contracts times the thousand under the line would have been 2,000 rand profit. Less my 200 rand brokerage to get in, less my 200 rand brokerage to get out. So it's 400 rand. So off my 2,000, I would have made my 1,600 rand. I hope that guys makes sense to you guys the, the process or the cash flow regarding initial margin, 
and the brokerage and mark to market. Those are the three important concepts you understand on a daily basis. So if you had a look at our initial margin outlay was 13,500. I made 1,600 rand in profit. That is a percentage would be 11 rand, sorry, 11.85%. 11, 11 and the rand as a percentage went from, from 1332 to 1312. So I'm making 11.85% on a rand that moves 1.5%. Can you see where the gearing comes in? So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Okay, so you can use it as a say as a hedge or you can use it as a speculative tool. Okay. I hope that it helps you guys. So what are the benefits? If I had summarize this very quickly for you guys, benefits of, of currency futures. Um, first thing as I said, just now the very cost effective way to gain exposure to the currency markets, 20 rand per contract, does not affect your offshore allowance. So uh don't worry about affecting your offshore allowance. It doesn't apply. They're characteristically very uh, liquid and easily traded. So you can get in and out very quickly, especially those four I highlighted just now. They're very capital efficient. I'm putting down roughly about 10%. They have exposure to 100%, but um, uh, as I say, very capital efficient. And you can t obviously take a, a short position. In other words, sell a, a futures position or uh, uh, if you want to benefit from a depreciating currency they're very transfer transparent pricing uh, go on the line you can see the pricing straight away and as I said these you're making use of um, wholesale interest rates in the pricing and also you have got a peace of mind being it uh, that it's uh, exchange regulated and guaranteed by the JC clearing house Okay, so those are just the, the benefits involved with, with trading currency futures. Okay, so let's look at some of the questions you guys might have. Okay, awesome. Oh, I like all the questions. Good. Dr. Fulyun, um, I'll send you a link anyway of the, of the past webinars. There's a webinar archive in our YouTube channel, but I'll send you the the, the past the link to that and, and also be sending you this particular uh, the PDF of the presentation as well as the recording there's a question from Jean Dollar <laughs> I like your surname Doll uh, Jean uh, appropriate am I correct in saying that one should always have more than the required margin in the account to prevent from running to the bank and back yes it's, it's beneficial um, so you don't want to take your full positions all the time um, would you say only exposing 50% of your, yeah, if you want to use 50%, that's fine, yeah. Um, but you can calculate what's the downside on a daily basis and have that margin available. Um, so, yes, I agree with you having that cash available in your trading account so you don't have to run backwards and forwards and closing out other positions and that. It's a good, good idea to have that, John. Okay. That would be prudent. Let me see what other questions you guys have. Question here from uh, um, okay. Question again. Yeah, am I right when saying the gearing effect is a multiple of the total exposure in relation to the margin? Yes. Okay. So as I say, you're putting down 10%, 1,350 rand to have exposure of 13,000 rand. So yes, that's that's where the gearing effect comes in. John, I uh, hope that helps answer your question. Yeah, good faith deposit. Yeah, I remember that uh, the um, when would that when would that interest start uh, affecting? Obviously, as soon as you open up the position, and when you close out the position, obviously interest it comes back to you. Okay, cool, pleasure, John. Okay, come okay, guys, where's all the questions? I left a lot of time for questions today. Or did I explain everything easy enough for you? For you, okay. Thanks, thanks. Okay, pleasure, doctor. Okay, look like all the questions. Cool. Okay. That's it. Look like that's the questions. Cool. Okay, so let's wrap this up quickly. Okay, let's get out the way. Yeah. Close. Ah. Okay, so what do you need? Next steps, those of you that don't have currency futures exposure, 
and would like to be able to either speculate or to hedge your your positions you go click on that link that'll help you to uh, uh, learn more about currency futures it opens up the uh, what we call the key information document uh, you can read up more about it as I mentioned before the webinar PDF as well as the recording will hopefully be sent out by Friday because obviously tomorrow is a public holiday. I don't think I'll be able to have it ready by then. But please help us and provide feedback. We send out in that webinar um, feedback. We send out a, a, a survey, monkey survey, gives us some feedback. But also any queries you have, please contact our, our, our direct team on wealth at PSG, and that's our, our number there, 0860 000 368. Any queries you have, any questions, we are there to help you. So please do not hesitate to contact us. Okay. But from our side, thank you very much for being on this webinar. Um, and, uh, yeah, until two weeks' time in, in, in May, uh, all the best. Bye for now.